Okay, as promised, we're at the Booth Bay Railway Museum. We're turning into just museum chasers, aren't we? I, this, this is like, <laughs> what's up museums? I mean, you can't get away from these museums. Mid They're everywhere. Mid-coast museums. But this is yeah. an old-timer kit, right? Huh? 1964? This has been here that long. Yeah. 1964. Right. I mean, this has years, been uh, years, different yeah. changes of ownership, and uh, now they're a nonprofit. They're a 5013C. Well, Bob, who, uh, who is the CEO here, says that's the only way they can stay afloat. Right. So we're going to meet Bob Ryan. He's yeah. here. He's graciously opened up the place for us, and we're going to see there's a lot different things going on here. Kit's infatuated with old refrigerators. We're That's right, we have to what? get there. What? Basically, there are just three three aspects, though. There's the uh, there's the railroad, and there's the uh, car collection, which mm -hmm. we know of from the Owl's Head Museum. And then, uh, what's the third one, Bob? Villages. Village, the village square with the old Booth Bay Town Hall there. What was that, 1927? 47. 47. 47. Okay, 18, it's, the, it's the chapel, it's the old one. Yeah. We have a, and, we, and we got a booth bay. Okay. We got a town hall here that's still operating as right. a town hall. It's viable. We, we're yeah. gonna from here. We're gonna make our way over to the train station, which actually came here in pieces from Freeport, Maine. Yeah. And so we're gonna check that out. Right and, across uh, the Bath Bridge. What anyway, did they call it in those days? We gotta get historical. Carlton Bridge. Carlton Bridge. Came across the Carlton Bridge. So Had to let's, pay a toll, uh, probably. So yeah. here we are. We're gonna spend a few. <laughs> A few minutes here and uh, check this place out. All right. So we're standing actually in the back of the train station, the Freeport station. This Me. is Bob Ryan. Bob actually lives in Damascata, so anyway, he's a hometown boy. And um, so this was brought here, correct? What year? Nin 1964. Mm -hmm. this, was, uh, this was the original building here. Yeah. Right? In, uh, in 1961, the Main Central Railroad uh, pretty much ceased passenger service so that they didn't really have a need for this station in Freeport. Uh, so it was moved here in 64, mm -hmm. and the first year of operation for the Booth Bay Railway Village was really nice. They probably moved this out and moved into Col uh, Columbia Sports Outlet or something. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, you can go down there today and you can see where this used to be. Uh, hmm. This was uh, built in 1912, right. and uh, today it, what we like about it is that it still served as a... Uh, as a train station, right. you can still sit in the lobby of the station and wait for a steam train. Speaking of trains, Bob, what do we got over here? Right over over here. here we have two standard gauge uh, cars. We uh, we run narrow gauge steam here, two foot between the rails. These are four feet, eight and a half inches between the That's rails. That's a lot bigger. A lot bigger. Uh, and, and a lot more expensive. Wasn't that why they yeah, invented I, the narrow gauge, was to save it. money? Yep, that's yeah. really it. The typical, narrow gauge and Typical Maine. Maine. Uh, well, Cheap. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> that, 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 that's a great story. We can talk about the narrow yeah. gauge a little later. This, uh, this is Caboose 563 from the Maine Central. I believe it was constructed around 1910, and we've restored it, and it's just like a caboose in size. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. how, um, how much did you put into it to restore it? I think you told uh, me. 30? Uh, 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 ongoing. We, you know, we do a lot. We do a lot. <laughs> it looks great. Thirty Bob. something thousand, though, right? Or more, yeah. yeah and more. and uh, what, yeah. what what the the function of the caboose was really the office for the train. They would keep track of the if they had freight cars, where the freight cars were going, mm -hmm. what 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 equipment needed to be dropped off where. And, Isn't that and, where they slept, too? And that's there's bunks in there. Yeah. And the little cupola or uh, uh -huh. monitor on top yeah. is so you can look at the train from the back of it and see if there's any problems and there's actually a brake system where you can stop yeah. the entire train see from if the caboose. See if it's caught fire from the engine exactly. yet? Exactly. Or, yeah. or the, the wheel bearings, uh, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes hot boxes, they call them. So yeah. we're going we're gonna to yeah. walk over, mm. speaking of yeah. the train, there's yeah. a box guy next door. We're going to walk over some very that interesting was a, plaques on there. That was given by France that to was, the Railroad Museum. Okay, this is a great story. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's the uh, the gratitude train or the Merci train was in 1949. Merci. They sent 49 of those boxcars over to the United States as a thank you for their efforts uh, in, in World War, actually World War One and World War Two. Oh, I see. That particular car was built in the late 1880s. And it's called a Mercy boxcar or a 40 and 8 car. And the number 40 refers to the men, or 8 refers to horses, but not both together. It could carry one or the other. It was a cavalry car. Oh, okay. The and, 1880s. Is that the original wood on that thing? A lot of it is. A lot of it is. And we restored it. We put the provincial plaques on the side representing the, uh, the various provinces of France. And Maine's boxcar came here in 1949. It toured the state, went to various towns throughout the state, then finally resided at, uh, I believe it was at the National Guard Armory in, in Augusta for a while. Mm -hmm. The Maine State Museum still has a lot of internal artifacts that were inside the boxcar. Mm. Uh, 
16 bottles of holy water, some bags of French earth. Mm -hmm. Champagne, uh, little, any champagne? I, you know, they just got done with a war. I'm thinking yeah. they probably didn't spare too much of anything of great value. There was a wedding dress in there. They, they, were, they filled these boxcars with gifts in order to uh, show their appreciation. That was uh, when France was solvent. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's head over there and talk to this, um, Bob, about this uh, boxcar. These plaques are yeah. amazing. All right, Mike, so we'll go okay. over there. We're next to the boxcar. This the is gratitude uh, tree. Boy, this is a high regency for boxcar Willie here. But th what struck me was, Bob, tell us about this hook, how these trains hooked in together. European trains uh, of this era had a different way to hook together. Um, and in the United States, we had something called the Lincoln Pin, mm -hmm. or we had automatic couplers, which was a big improvement. Uh, the Europeans had a, uh, had, a had kind of a, a, a Lincoln hook here that they could tension, and then these bumpers would uh, keep would, the pressure would, on. Keep the pressure on. Right. And have the cars uh, roll correctly together. And you'll notice this car is only carried on four wheels. Where we, when we do a box car, we do a truck. Each truck has four wheels, and it's a total of eight wheels. So right. it's a, it's a right. it's a very different system. But this is. Uh, this is 1885. This is a really old, old vehicle, and uh, they have uh, uh, made accommodations. Where did you say? Where do you think this came from? Well, this this originally was built built Fancy. in France, and uh, it's a uh, 40 and 8 box car. As I said, the name, the yeah. numbers refer to men or horses, not both together. Mm -hmm. um, and on the side of the box car are the uh, plaques. Yeah. So, Mike, right. Mike, if you can show us these for brakes. I mean, the air hose here well, is something they, new and different. They, they had mechanical brakes, and they had certain cars had a brakeman's cupola on them, and they would control the brakes from uh, from that. Okay. There is some hardware on here for brakes, but the the brakes have been removed in order to allow for it to be able to be used on our, our water. So all these different plaques are provinces. These are all provinces in France, and. Uh, these are exact replicas of, of the plaques. The actual plaques still exist, and they're uh, in uh, the Maine State Museum in Augusta. Uh, they were very cooperative in, in hooking us up with uh, the design so that we could uh, replicate them. And as you see, it says the Gratitude Train or the Merci right. Boxcar. Merci. And uh, there's a lot of information out about these, but they were uh, filled with artifacts from France. Uh, anything that they could do. Uh, hey, what, after they can, just got through World War II. Can you tell me more about why there was a wedding dress in a boxcar? They just put stuff, you know, one lady said, I don't have anything to give, and the paint on the boxcar was wet, so she put her hand on the boxcar and she said, I'm giving you my handprint. They were, they, they had, they just oh, gave, that's sweet. They, they just gave yeah. what they could. What about the World War II prisoner story there? Well, because some of these boxcars were confiscated during the war, there are some uh, older folks that have come by and visited the museum and said, I was a POW in World War II, and I actually took a ride in one of these boxcars. There were probably more than four people in it then. They huh? were probably more than uh, 40 people. Yeah, there was, <laughs> probably it was pretty darn uncomfortable, but uh, yeah, I uh, there is actually a uh, kind of a... A, a branch of the, the veterans of foreign wars. It's called the 40 and 8 Society. Okay, uh, it's kind 40 of an honorary eight. society. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, years ago, Bud Colby over in Dermascotti used to be ahead of that. Um, and huh. um, um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a very meaningful thing. Every state in the Union got one of these. There were 49 shipped over. The 49th, there were only 48 states at that time. And the 49th was divided between uh, District of Columbia and Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to get more information about this particular boxcar, you can visit our website or the Mercy Train, and, 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 and in total, it's also yeah, yeah. We have links on there, too. Mm. I'd like to plug your website. I mean, Good. I went over, and it's extremely informative, and people Excellent. should do that. Yeah. Good. All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to head in the station and uh, see what we can find in there. Okay. Sounds good. So we're in the train station. Boy, is this in great shape. Yeah, it's a little chilly, though. We ought to yeah. fire up this old bellied stove here. Yeah, we'll give it, a boy, the, the condition of everything in here Gorgeous. is just beautiful. Yeah. Hey, the light fixtures, everything, the wainscoting, the floors. This poster, Bob. Now, yes. this is... Um, this tells you a little bit about the prices. Now, what we got going here? Bangor to Portsmouth. Yep, uh, this is a really great piece. And, and yeah. I should just say that we are in the, the Freeport station built 1912, mm -hmm. uh, served Freeport. And uh, this has been, we've restored this completely inside and out. Mm -hmm. uh, there was originally bright work. And uh, it's great, once again, that you can wait for a train in a train station. Right. Some of them, yeah. Turned into laundromats and so forth. <laughs> um, so uh, this is 1841. 
Mm -hmm. If, to the best of my knowledge, the first train in Maine was 1832. Mm -hmm. So this is a really, really early wow. coaster. Uh, this is the real deal. It's not a replica or anything like that. And it just gives you an idea of some of the routes and the... Uh, and so the we box. got Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Portsmouth, New Hampshire, you can stop in Portland, Maine, Augusta, Maine, Bangor, Maine. Now, Kit was saying off camera that this is a little pricey. That certainly is. It's nine dollars and seventy-five cents back then to go it. from Portsmouth to Bangor. So that kind of showed you. You got yeah. it. Kind of shows you that the the class of people that were traveling on these trains. I mean, this was a modern, comfortable way to travel, of course. And so Bangor to Portsmouth was nine seventy-five. Augusta to Portsmouth six twenty-five. So. And the cheapy Portland to uh, Portsmouth only three dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's probably a week's wages, if not more. Yeah. Uh, uh, in that yeah. era, um, so you're right. It is. It was. Uh, I'm sure uh, somewhat uh, economically restrictive. I guess you'd call it. <laughs> but uh, I just really like the fact. That this is one of the things yeah. that the Booth Bay Railway Village really tries to do is preserve uh, so that we can talk about it here in, in 2011. Right. Well, well, you, well you have, have a fairly places. extensive educational function here, too, yeah, which I do. haven't talked about Actually, at all. Actually, this weekend, uh, we're doing a STEAM course uh, where we're taking uh, students uh, who sign up for the course, teaching them, giving them one day of classroom activity and one day of, uh, in the cab of a locomotive activity. Mm. And huh. you learn about huh. what STEAM is, the properties of it, how it's controlled in a boiler of a locomotive, and then uh, the second day you actually get to get into one of our. There will be the fuel for that. That would be hard coal. Hard yeah. coal, yeah. anthracite. Yeah. 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 And uh, but but what's interesting is that we can we can project that knowledge. Uh, oh, that'd be uh, fine. I'd like to do that. Yeah, yeah. Kit's, Kit's going to sign up. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Sign. yeah. Well, <laughs> you got a chance because we do have a little bit of room. For we got one room. opening. He's yeah, in. <laughs> one opening. <laughs> Uh, and yet there's more about that on the website at uh -huh. But it, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really interesting function. And what we do is we also get some volunteer engineers out of that. Some of the people who okay. are local are get so okay. For the bitten by the bug of that, that beautiful steam power that uh, yep. we've, got, uh, we've got a retired lawyer from Nobleboro. We have a retired uh, physician from the, the Booth Bay area. That volunteer. How many pe how many volunteers you got to get this whole uh, thing? You know, when we do our, our events in the summertime, we have, we have as many as forty volunteers helping us out. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, to do our day with Thomas event uh, in August. Mm -hmm. And starting next week, you've got the ghost rides. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, uh, yeah, October twenty eighth and 29th from five thirty to eight, we're doing a uh, ghost train. Yeah, if you uh, want to bring the kids on, the it, it's totally a kid thing. Yeah, some of the stuff around the state are really come more of an adult thing. This, we really gear it towards kids for it up. And we try and make it, uh, as I say, more cute than scary. The 28th, 29th, yeah. 5.30, okay. you bring, your, bring yeah. your child here and he'll take you on a little let, 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 Let's emphasize though that it's cute, not it, scary. It, 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 yeah, it, yeah. It's, it, it's not confrontation. There, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no goblins coming out of the yeah, woods. Yeah, it, it, you know, we have Your, your, chi your child's <laughs> not going to be in therapy for the rest of his life. <laughs> and. Uh, so uh, anyway, that's that, that sounds good. good. We're going to go next door. We, we right, found... Right, just through the door there. Yeah, through the door. Um, we found a little thing that the, go this back building has got... Old Freeport. This, yep, it talks all about old Freeport. We're going to check that out. Kit knew he was coming to the show today, and he dug up his old, his right. old suitcase from the University of Maine. We used to this come is, home from the weekend on the train, right? This is what I brought my laundry in, yep. right here. Hi, Ma. Came <laughs> home for the okay. weekend. Yep. <laughs> Dump your laundry, right? <laughs> So anyway, that's what that's how the expression dirty laundry came up. Yeah. But anyway, this is amazing. The picture behind us, right, Bob, is the station in Freeport. Right. And the 1951. all 1951. And 1951. And those packages that we're looking at, tell them what that is, Bob. And yeah, where you well, got well, actually, it's, it's, it's great. It's the story how we got this. Uh, this came in the mail to the to the museum from L.L. Bean, I and mean, he wrote us a letter saying, I understand you now have the, the Freeport Station, and I thought you'd be interested in this photograph of a September 1951 photograph of one day shipment of L.L. Bean's uh, Railway Express wow. uh, uh, freight. One uh, day. So that, uh, <laughs> that shows that they were, uh, they were quite uh, 
quite quite busy uh, right. even even before. Well, we might point out back then it was predominantly shoes, which was the LL Bean duck boot, which mm -hmm. started right. the, the, the main, main hunting shoe. Yeah. Right. So yeah. anyway, so that probably was a bunch of shoes going <laughs> to uh, Kansas or yeah. something. But I, I think when we brought when we moved this museum, this uh, building over to the museum in the attic were uh, cartons and cartons of LL Bean catalogs uh, still re still left over from previous years. But, uh -huh. mm -hmm. This certainly was uh, a distribution point for a lot of the the, the bean business. Mm. So it's kind of a, kind of unique. Well, I thought we'd take a look at this. This is amazing. And, and but... every once in a while, we get a little comment from somebody in Freeport saying, "When are you going to give us our station back?" <laughs> oh, no way. Okay. Yeah, when do you give us passenger service? All right, so we're going to, where's the uh, kid's refrigerator he's dying to oh, see? That would be in the Harrington house. Okay, okay. so we're going to move out of here, and uh, you can spend all day in here, but we want to get to see sure as much as we can. can. They've got the milk cans here. This is the milk oh, train we've got here. It's endless. So <laughs> we got to get out of here. Yeah. Another gorgeous building here. I mean, this is, you built this building, it's a new old barn, right? It's, it's components of an old barn that we had to refresh, but it is, it is post and beam uh, right. structure and uh, accurately, Gorgeous. accurately done. Yep. Gorgeous. Yep. What do we got here? We got well, all, what's the name of the name this of this is, building? This is the Harrington uh, Livery Stable and House. Yeah. And there's a word up there I don't even know, so we might as well try and educate people. It's got livery, hack, and boarding. What's hack? Hack is like a, like a cab, like a taxi cab. Yeah. Oh, actually, oh, we it's have a slang a, word a, for a cab. A, a, That's no, right. Depot hack. Um, yeah. you know, when, when actually, when you get a taxi hack cab, me. There you go. That, yes. I was going to reference that. This uh, this uh, carriage right back here it was a hack in Boston, and it mm -hmm. had uh, it had it's a, it was a convertible, mm -hmm. meaning you could have kids uh, runners on it, uh, or winter, had a yeah. set of wheels for mm -hmm. summertime. Yeah. And a lot of carriages. Half of the that. stuff in here has wheels, and half of the stuff has sleds. <laughs> There's so an awful lot know? of sleds. Okay, so no, the, actually, the word of the day is is perambulator. And that, that's, a, that's a baby carriage, mm -hmm. a nice old wicker baby carriage with a little umbrella. They always had those little umbrellas on them. And we, yeah. we have a Very variety of express wagons and, and, and buggies, as I said, the Boston uh, hack. Uh, we yeah. also have uh, a couple of Portland cutters here. They're yeah, yeah, carriages. yeah. You could get these from Sears for about $3. Right. And, uh, Looks like you had some of the larger main folk riding in this one. Yeah, yeah. Well, some of them we we <laughs> oh, this one's in. We haven't restored this one because we believe this to be an, actually a Booth Bay building. Booth Bay, that's uh, what it says. Uh, yeah. Wagon, and we're not going to touch it until we can uh -huh. get, uh, get an idea of what exactly it's supposed to uh, supposed to look like. Okay. Uh, well, we're like. going to head inside because Kit's going to get to see his old refrigerator. Oh, yeah, I'm just so excited. <laughs> All right, I've opened up the... Uh, so we're in a kitchen, an old kitchen. Uh, yep. What year do you think, period? Well, we span some years, uh, but it's, yeah. it's the, the mid-20s. Mid-20s. Uh, with, with, no. with some improved items and some unimproved mm -hmm. items. People kill for this. Look at this pepper and salt shaker. It's beautiful. Wow. Right? Yeah, so, like an old bread. Anyway, an old iron. We got a ringer washing machine. Where was this built? This is a the Portland, Portland stove. stove foundry. This right? is yep. Portland, built in Portland, Maine. Duchess Atlantic. Coal. Right? Coal stove. And uh, hot water here. Somebody's going to have to polish all the time. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I hate to tell you, Kit, but this is a General Electric refrigerator over here. Yeah. It's a beauty. Um, you think it still works? I know it doesn't work. No. Okay. Is that where you tried to keep some beer in it or something? Uh, well, no, but we actually we, we, we vacated the, uh, the coolant that was in it. Uh, oh. Yeah. Boy, it's in well, great was it, condition. Was it about 27, 1927? It's actually a 1929 29. monitor top yep. General Electric refrigerator. And they called it the monitor top because that was supposed to remind people of the monitor in the Civil War. That's right. Yeah. Exactly, that's right. And that's your compressor on the top, right? Yeah. Yep. 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 Today there well, are. Well, I wonder how loud. I'd like to see it, just see how loud it was. <laughs> <laughs> but. It was yeah. a uh, it, that was a big improvement because uh, within the uh, yeah. promotional materials for the uh, for the refrigerator was, you know, it's it food safety. Mm -hmm. You could you could keep right. food longer. Right. You right. Spoil. It's okay oh, to absolutely. be hungry, right? Right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so on this, uh, we we got the Hudson Car, mm -hmm. which had its own newspaper, and they're actually um, announcing three brilliant, brilliant the adjective new cars. So. Boy, speaking of cars, uh, according to your website, one of these refrigerators costs more than a car. 
uh, you could buy Model T for less than that refrigerator. That the refrigerator was about 500 and change, uh, $500 in 1929. Mm. Right. That's a lot of money. Of course, that was way down from the very earliest one, so they are almost twice that expensive right. in 1911 or whatever. Yep. Yeah. So, so we're uh, getting by cheap now. Yeah, so our Ringer washing machine is from the Syracuse Washer Corporation yeah. in Syracuse, New York. And it's an easy Model H. That's very important oh. in the trade, <laughs> in the trade name. And they were good for disciplining your children, too. If they misbehaved, you could pass their fingers All through right. them. So that could wash it. How many pairs of dungarees do you think you'd get in there? <laughs> Ooh, fair number. You ought to peek down in here. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, quite the nice agitator. agitator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so did that run on, did you move it with your hand, or how did you agitate? That, that one's electric. That's electric. Yeah. They, had, they had them were with little gasoline engines. The mm -hmm. Maytag uh, was famous for making uh, little uh, gasoline engines. It had a little kickstarter on it. You'd mm -hmm. it up, and that would get the agitator. And you're telling me that you had an iron that ran on gas, too. We have an iron, a uh, clothes <laughs> iron. Well, they had various ways of dealing with ironing clothes. You could just put it on a stove, get it hot that way. And burn Some the heck out of your starch. Yeah. Coal in it, uh, you know, coal, uh, hot coals from uh -huh. the stove. This one actually has a little gas tank on it, a little pressure pump, and it's a, a gasoline powered iron. <laughs> I just realized that civilization has hated wrinkles for many, many years. <laughs> well, we're going many, back to them. Now, why are we trying to get rid of wrinkles? What did they ever do to us? <laughs> As you get older, that'll have more meaning for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Botox. Anyway, but, I'm not gonna, but I'm not going to use an iron. <laughs> So we're headed off. Where are we going to go next? You're up here. We're going car. to the cars. We car. haven't been to the cars. Let's go to the car exhibit. Okay, we're going to Fantastic. see a couple of cars here. So thank God there's a gas station here at the Booth Bay Railway Village because so, we have a few cars that we're going to show you that need some gas. But Bob Ryan told us that this was an actual gas station in East Booth Bay on Route 96. And so anyway... Um, yeah, I was going to pump some gas. We're going to we're going to show you a couple of cars that might need some gas. There's a few a few jalopies kicking around. These here. these are the a couple of the jalopies that we yeah. uh, need some gas. Yeah, these wrecks. I mean, these are the biggest white walls. <laughs> what a, this wouldn't be a Rockefeller car, would it? Well, I I think it is. It used yeah. to belong to uh, Alva Prentice Rockefeller, who was the daughter of John D. Rockefeller. Hmm. It's a 1941 Cadillac uh, Model 75 uh, convertible limousine. <laughs> kind of an unusual configuration to have a limousine be convertible. Um, it does have the division window in it. Mm -hmm. but, uh, keep so. the division window down if the top's down. Right. And, uh -huh. and yeah, it's got I, his I, I, I notice it's got current plates on it. I can drive it home. Yeah. Uh, keys are in it. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> we got an inspection sticker? Well, uh, uh, one's on its way. Okay. It's coming in the mail. I don't see this car getting pulled over and asked for an inspection sticker. <laughs> License uh, and registration, please. <laughs> right. But Kit yeah. is like in uh, his glory oh. back there. Last week we had a 19, what, 1920, how was it, Mike? 27 Silver Cloud? A, this is a 1964? 60. 60. 62 yeah. Silver Cloud Rolls Royce. Silver, Silver and, and, that's, and that's an interesting owner. Who's the owner of that? Yeah, that's, uh, our founder owns that car. And it's here on loan. Mm -hmm. And we actually use it uh, occasionally for uh, special occasions at a certain level of membership. We'll take it out and give oh, it Oh, yeah. Probably one of the higher yeah, levels, I would be guessing. Used, used for. Mm -hmm. uh, great, are most uh, of these great. cars owned by the museum, or are these all loaners from these people, are, collectors? Most of them are on loan. Nine of the vehicles right. in here have been donated to the museum. The rest okay. of them are on loan, which means we can, we can adjust the display from year to year. It makes mm -hmm. it interesting. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got a, a, a 37 Packard Phaeton over here that was huh. at the museum some years ago, the beautiful green car with the top down. Jeez. And it's a custom coach built by Ralston in, uh, in New York on a beautiful 1937 Packard uh, chassis and uh, powertrain. Uh, I love that fire engine. It is classic. And uh, the button steam pumper. Uh, yeah. We have about 55 vehicles in here. The button steam pumper is built in 1885. Uh, for Old Town, Maine, uh, that was a complete volunteer restoration and uh, took about six years for volunteers to do it. Mm -hmm. These, uh, these uh, steam pumpers were basically blacksmith built, so you might be uh, taking a, a screw or a bolt out and it might be an uncommon thread or it might not match everything. It might be. Huh. Um, so it, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful piece, has a boiler, that big uh, copper dome on it. 
is to capture air to equalize the uh, uh, pulsations uh, right. as they go out. And that, that, that could pump a two and a half inch stream of water 300 feet in the air. Right. What's, we, what's the business with the V8 on the wall that there? That came from Haggett's in uh, Wiscasset. It used to be a Ford dealer in uh, oh, Wiscasset yeah? on, uh, uh, I think it was Water Street in Wiscasset, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's an original uh, V8. Uh, Mike's nodding. He grew up there. He knew where everything was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's a piece of uh, local history. So this is a 1964 hot dog wagon, and this is a pretty special deal for Booth Bay people, right? Uh, this is uh, Brud Pierce's, the, uh, the, the king. Hot dog uh, king. The hot dog king. Uh, yep. This is his, uh, his, uh, his wagon that he used to... Uh, Sell his hot dogs wow. uh, in Center Booth Bay Harbor for years and years. Uh, he sold a lot of hot dogs. You say he was the only vendor, wasn't he? The only one that was licensed or whatever? I, I think so, yeah. yeah. He, uh, he had uh, quite a following, and uh, of course, you could get all the information you ever needed from Brad. And uh, upon his passing, he left this uh, 1964 Cushman Truckster to, uh, to the railway village. Yeah, two bucks for a hot dog seems a little high to me for 1964. Well, that may be a modern price. You know, that oh, may be okay. Like a, Maybe in the 80s or 90s. He certainly yeah. was a legend. Speaking of legends, what's this truck we got this going is a, here? This is a Model T. Uh -huh. I love Model T uh, yep. Ford's. Bob was uh, teaching me how to drive it. I can't do it, though. But he's saying he may put on a course next summer, and I bet you get 100 people come and I take that for don't fun. don't know that I can handle 100, but that'd be fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a Model T. It's a, called a depot hack or, or, or station wagon. and. Uh, Gets at the wheel and you shift the car with the foot pedal. Yeah, you got three pedals. You got to work yeah, here and a lever here work, and you and advance the spark and column, throttle spark. comes right up on the. It doesn't have any cup holders, kid. No, that's right. It doesn't. No, uh, no also, doesn't have any windshield wiper. What do no, you do in the rain? Uh, no GPS. Some of them had a hand-operated windshield wiper. I remember wiper, that. That was an extra. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. You just open the window so you can see. You, you just keep going. And get the or, rain in your face. Or, or you stop. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. I don't see the starter. Where's the starter? No, that would be the crank out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna one more stop. We're gonna look at this amazing car that's uh, we just picked. We, I mean, there's all kinds. How many cars we have in there's here? There's about 55 vehicles. We have 55 vehicles in here. If you gotta come in here when in, during the season when they're open and see these cars. But we got one more stop, so let's check that out. Well, I'm standing beside a 1912 Stanley steamer. It actually runs on steam, amazingly enough. And uh, this is sort of an early rumble seat, you might say, except it was called a uh, mechanic seat. No, it wasn't called a mechanic seat. It was called a mother-in-law seat. That's what it is. Well, yeah, but actually the mechanic did, did sit back. What are you scratching your head for, Bobby? Well, I lost my hat, but on the way to look for my hat, uh, we got... This is a Packard, right, Bob? This is a 1937 Packard Fayette. Look at this. Yeah. These people travel. They're doing some traveling. This is yeah, like this, this was the trunk, and and just to show you the uh, the uh, how that worked, you you inside this trunk, uh, you uh, wow had fitted suitcases. Oh man! Oh, my you had look suitcases at that. for clothes, and there was even a hat box in there. A hat box? Yeah, and uh, it's uh, all restored and ready to go, and just like brand new. Whoops! Oh, what are you? You're, Except you're, you're a magician. Oh. All right. <laughs> look at I mean look at this lug look at this luggage. It's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Oh my god. This was not for the average traveler though. No. This was uh <laughs> well, the, toity again. Do we know who owns this car? This was donated to the museum yeah. several years ago. Wow. So this is part of the museum's collection. All right. So oh, great. It's better than jamming it in your trunk. <laughs> Okay, well, we are exhausted. We're out of time. <laughs> I, we could spend a week here, oh, easy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you should come by the Booth Bay Railway Museum. And when do you open again, Robert? We'll be opening in May of uh, 2012. Right. We do have the, the ghost train event. Right. Uh, we're going to have uh, some Christmas trains, and we will have an event on uh, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And the website is? Railwayvillage.org. tells you everything. Like us on Facebook and yep. the whole thing. Thank so, you. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks. Yeah, you did Thanks, a Kit. terrific job. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. See ya.